G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Donald Trump puts out one tweet and all the markets go into a bit of a spin. So he's basically put out a tweet and said that there'll be no more stimulus packages until after he wins the election. So it's really put a bee in a few people's bonnets. Uh, I'm not really too sure why. I mean, we, you know, do we need stimulus right now? The elections are only, you know, a couple of weeks away. Uh, and I'm sure even when Joe Biden gets in, there's still going to be more stimulus there as well. So it's not, you know, really whether he wins or, or doesn't win that, uh, you know, should really dictate the market. But that's the power that some people have. So we can see here that the Dow Jones and things like that all took a bit of a tumble straight after he put out his tweet. But let's go have a look at what's happened to the markets. So here's the Dow Jones. Get rid of these. And we can see... Yeah, it's had a bit of a pullback here today. Donald Trump puts out his tweet, no more stimulus, and the market's down a little bit. Let's have a look at the SPX. So the S&P 500, much the same. It's gone down a little bit. Let's have a look at gold. Same thing, down a little bit. So that's the effect that social media can have on the markets. And that shows you how irrational the markets can be a little bit at some times as well. That's not, you know, steady heads, you know, you know doing these kind of thing. It's, you know, in my opinion, uh, it's inexperienced traders and things like that just overreacting to a, a simple tweet. So is there anything else that's been affected by it? Unfortunately, yes, but it's not too bad. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. So as I showed the other day, we were looking like we are going to break out of this trend line and we actually rejected from it. So this is the short term trend line, like the real short term trend line. This is our other short term trend line here. But this one is going up and it shows the lows are still getting higher. And this is our greater trend line here. So this is the bigger one from uh, back in the peak of 2017. So we're still above that. We're still holding this uh, short term trend line on the upside. So if I can put that there, we can see since around about the halving, we've just been trending upwards. Now there's still volatility in there, don't get me wrong, obviously all of this and then all of this really hurt, but now it's just getting tighter and tighter and tighter and we're waiting to see what's gonna happen here. But that 10,000 sort of $500 level to you know 10,300 ish, it's holding pretty well and has been for a while. So my gut feeling is we're probably going to see some sideways action after Donald Trump's tweet. I was feeling a little bit more bullish before because he was talking about a uh, stimulus package coming out shortly, but now he's decided that you know he's not going to endorse any more stimulus packages till after the election. But he has said that after the election, uh, he's got, a I think, a $1.6 trillion stimulus package or something that's going to come out. So I think we're going to trade pretty sideways for the next few weeks until the election. That's what I'm guessing now. I was expecting us to kind of break out and, you know, punch up to around the 12,000. But unfortunately, that tweet uh, has really put a damper on all the things. And people who are too worried, neither president who gets in, it doesn't matter whether it's Biden or Trump, are going to let these markets fail. They're just not going to. They couldn't afford to. If all the markets sort of failed and, you know, basically went to, you know, near zero. We're not going to say zero because they wouldn't be able to go to zero. No one would sell everything. But if they sold off a lot, it would just put entire countries and the whole world, for that matter, in economic disarray. No president uh, is going to allow that uh, in any country, but specifically the United States, who are, you know, sort of seen as the world leaders in finance and things like that. They're not going to let it fail like that. There's, they'll just keep printing money. That's what they'll do. Now, in the long term, that's bad, hyperinflation. But again, they will just they'll print their way sort of out of it. Not that they can completely print their way out of it. But what I'm trying to say is it's not going to zero. It's not just going to fall over and go to nothing. That's not to say uh, it couldn't possibly go lower. And again, I hear people talking on Twitter and YouTube, that this is, you know, possibly going to come back and retest 9,000 and maybe even the $7,000 level. I just don't see that happening. There's going to be more stimulus coming and you can just see that this is being bought up. As soon as it starts to get down low, it just gets bought up. So yeah, I don't see it going low, lower. But something I found interesting 
is let's have a look at the Dixie. The Dixie is on a bit of a rise. So we had this trend uh, coming down. We broke that, and I thought we were going to roll over and come back down under, but we didn't. And it looks like the Dixie, i.e. the dollar, is on its way back up. And that shows a market where people are unsure and not willing to invest, and they're holding on to their dollars. Now, look, that's not a completely bad idea. I've got a stash of, not a stash, but I have a... Uh, position of cash put aside for should you know things get lower then I'm going to buy into you know things mainly crypto but I'll probably buy into some gold uh, if it continues to go lower um, and, and yeah that's not a bad idea overall I wouldn't want to hold cash for too long if you have a look at cash it's just been you know going down for a really long time uh, and again it's lost so much of its value uh, in the last sort of hundred years well, it basically, yeah, since around about the time they got off the gold standard, cash has really, really gone down. So I think that was 1930s or something like that. Uh, FDR took us off the, or not us, but took the Americans off the gold standard. And again, they're basically uh, the financial backbone of the world. So I guess you can say they took us off the gold standard. Let's have a look at gold though. Gold, it's not really that much of a safe haven. Unfortunately, all markets are correlated. And people like to believe they're not. Now, there's high correlation and low correlation, but all markets are correlated. That's the way it is. It doesn't matter what you're invested in at the moment. Everything's basically come down in price. I don't know anything that's gone through the roof through this, um, you, know, you know, this current economic climate. You know, like the stocks, the ones that have sort of done well, they've been artificially boosted. So it's not through, you know, they've produced more and made more money and things like that. Uh, most things are kind of down at the moment. So any market you look at, really, if you're trying to get an understanding of where it's going to be at, have a look at other markets and see what they're doing, unless they're kind of in the reverse. And again, so we're looking at assets here. They're all pulling back uh, and, you know, taking a bit of a turn for the worse, I guess you could say. N not too much the worse, but definitely on the downside. But you have a look at the dollar and the dollar's doing stronger. Because people are worried, so they're holding on to cash and they've sold a few stocks and things like that. And they want to have money ready to go just to see what sort of happens. And we can see this is now the new trend line. So it's going up, although it is starting to get closer to this. And I'm not sure that it's going to pump right up. I think it's going to roll over eventually, break this trend line uh, and still start to go lower as well. That's just what the dollar's done for a really, really long time. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. All right, so some interesting uh, news that I found. Regulation is coming to DeFi, but can it be enforced? Look, DeFi does need some regulation, unfortunately. You know, for it to be mass adopted and all the rest of it, it 100% needs regulation. We just don't want it to be over-regulated. Like any market, when it gets over-regulated, it stifles everything, and then it's just a really slow burn after that. We're looking for, you know, that kind of, the good volatility, uh, and over-regulation just hinders that. Now, this is what I really like. So, to combat the situation of all the funny, you know, no, they're not funny, all the things that are going on in the DeFi space, you know, the bad stuff, Confirm, that's a company, has built its AMLT Oracle, an anti-money laundering or AML tool for DeFi uh, under its AMLT wing. The Oracle essentially can run addresses through a filter and check whether they have been previously whether they have previously been associated with anything suspicious. Projects and exchanges can then freeze funds or transfer from said addresses accordingly. So I think this is a good idea. Now again, you just gotta make sure, you know, regulators don't get, you know, heavy handed with it, but this will definitely help weed out all the bad players. So basically what happens if someone uh, has uh, addresses that are, you know, linked to suspicious activity, then they're not going to be able to send uh, coins from there, you know, to any of the big exchanges or projects and things like that. It doesn't mean there won't be anywhere to, for them to send the money. You know, they'll still have uh, certain places that they can send their uh, money to be laundered, or their, not their money, their cryptocurrencies, you know, to be laundered and then sent back to other addresses and things like that. So there's still going to be ways around it. It's not 100% proof, but this is really good. This is what we need to weed out all the bad players you know, and all the people that just kind of ruin it for everyone, you know, basically the criminals and things like that. Also, so Chris Larson from Ripple, he's basically said that uh, Ripple may have to leave USA 
because they're just having uh, problems with regulation. It's not happening fast enough. So he says that uh, the US, which is the, you know, the global financial leaders of the world, uh, it's, le it's losing the cold tech war with China. And he did put out, uh, or not put out a tweet, uh, he was on a video uh, conference and basically stated that, you know, we really need to be concerned if China has the world uh, currency, they become the dominant force, you know, communism and all the rest of it and you know things like that and they're you know really you know i'm not from china but this is from what i've heard they're overbearing on a lot of their people they have real tight controls on what people in their country can and can't do and whether that's good or bad is a i guess a personal opinion but for most of us in sort of the free world we wouldn't like the idea of you know a communist party controlling the way money moves around the world and having kind of you know the biggest say that would definitely be concerning so he did say that yeah ripple may leave the united states but other other people have said this and i tend to agree i don't think they're in any rush to do that i'm not saying they wouldn't i think it's more just a bit of a, a poke you know to the u.s legislators that you know we need to get a move on with this stuff before we're just too far behind uh, and can't stay on top. So very, very interesting. Uh, again, I don't think Ripple would rush out of the USA. Uh, that's their home, and I think that's where they, you know, want to be, you know, based uh, around the financial capital of the world. But they have talked about going to Singapore, Japan, and you know things like that. So yeah, interesting times. I, I think you know the lawmakers in the US are starting to try and bring through some acts and things, and I think this is. Again, just a bit of a poke in the side to tell them, you know, let's hurry up and let's get this sorted out before we just fall too far behind and, you know, it's a one-horse race with China. Um, yeah, that would definitely be concerning for most people uh, if China were the financial powerhouse of the world. And, you know, they basically, their digital yuan became the uh, dominant currency for the world, particularly the way they would control it and most likely manipulate it. Yeah, definitely concerning. All right, so a bit of news today, but again, for me, I'm just holding. We can go back to the Bitcoin chart. Yes, it's rolled over a little bit here, but the trend for quite some time has been on the up. That's our sort of short-term uh, short term trend line. The shorter trend line is definitely coming down, but again, it's just tightly coiling, tightly coiling. Something that we can do, though, is let's go to the weekly. go to the weekly all right and let's see if our exponential moving average is still holding because I'm quite certain that it has and this is what we've got to keep an eye on for. In part in previous history, there we go. We can see the 21 week exponential moving average. Sorry, if we can, oh, there it is. There we go, we can see it down there. It's still holding. Now we can see that it's wicked down and basically bounced off it. So bear markets are in the, not bear markets, bull markets, sorry, in the past, as we can see, it holds above. It'll, you know, sort of wick down below, but there's no major closes underneath uh, the 21 week uh, exponential moving average in a bull run. So this was that bull run. Again, started way back here, and we can see that it wicked down, and there was even a close here that kind of bounced off it. And I think there's another one here, that, a close that kind of bounced off it. But that's exactly what it's done in the bull markets. So if this is a bull market that started here and you know it would have started just before the halving, that's what these big lines here are. So what we can see is that it has been holding since sort of back here. We've come down, wicked off it, wicked off it, and we're getting very close to it again. And my personal opinion is as Bitcoin sort of flat lines, as it sort of did here, this 21 week moving average gets closer and closer and it's very close at the moment. I do think there's gonna be an explosive move coming from it uh, in the not too distant future. I think we are going to bounce off it and we're going to rock it up pretty hard. Uh, I think there'll be some stimulus or something uh, that's going to happen. Uh, and you know, 
as I've said previously, I do believe that Bitcoin is being brought up uh, after the micro uh, strategy uh, way of doing it, where they just slowly but surely bought it over periods of time to build up positions so as not to rocket up the price. I think that is all starting to catch up, and that's what we're finding here. And other companies are starting to do it, uh, and we're going to pump up pretty hard, and I think we're going to come up go past that $12,500 level fairly quickly, and I think we're gonna get up to that $14,000 level. I do think it'll be a fairly explosive move. Uh, I predict it to happen probably late in October, sort of early November. It's going to be around the election time. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I could be wrong, but that's just my general thoughts based on what I've seen Bitcoin do before. Uh, and yeah, just the way markets operate in general. You know, the fear is, uh, uh, sort of more dominant at the moment and that's generally when bitcoin does its best work as you can see here oh the fear the fear and then bang and you know again the fear bang rockets up so the fear is getting strong again uh and we're probably going to push to the upside but anyway that's just my thoughts on the market i think this 21 a week exponential moving average would be a good buy-in point so uh it's roughly around sort of ten thousand two hundred. is it let's say roughly about here so yeah, ten thousand two hundred sort of fifty dollars, or ten thousand. Let's just round it up a little bit. Ten thousand three hundred dollars. My personal opinion is that wouldn't be a bad buy-in price if you're interested in getting in. Uh, I do have a buy order. I think it's ten thousand three hundred and sixty-five dollars or something like that. Uh, and again, I've got other buy orders for if for some reason it goes lower. So the $9,000 range and the $8,000 range. I've got buy-ins there, although I don't think they're going to get filled. But Again, I could be wrong. Time will tell. And if I am wrong and Bitcoin goes down to those prices, well, my buy orders are in and I'm going to pick up some cheap Bitcoin. But again, I don't expect those to be filled and I don't think that $9,600 CME gap is going to be filled either. All right. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train, although it's a little bit hard uh, with the last sort of few days and weeks. And I'll see you next time.